All right, welcome back everybody for part three of the Bezier curve grass. Uh, when we last left off, we had fixed the normals of our blade to match the curvature of the Bezier curve, but uh, our look is still pretty flat, which may be appropriate for more stylized games, but it didn't suit Ghost of Tsushima. So in that uh, game, they did add pixel normals along the width of the grass to give it a sense of curvature in that direction as well and give it a sense of depth um, and form that it otherwise lacked. So here's what we again left off with and what we're going to do is try to get this result here. If I go ahead and apply that to our grass in the world, we can see that now it looks quite a lot more three-dimensional thanks to that added normal detail. So we have shading on the edge of the grass and we even have a bit of rim lighting as well that gives it a sense of apparent thickness so um, we can cha uh, change the strength of the effect to make it you know, uh, stronger or we can get rid of it i like to set it to set up kind of a low modest value and let's go ahead and zoom in on the grass. And just I want you to pay attention to the way that the shape changes here. But um, one thing to note is uh, this cross product is actually not really necessary. We've shifted our grass in the X direction and we shifted it in the Z direction, but none of the world position offset we've done has been in the Y direction. So that was always off outputting zero anyway. So theoretically we could get rid of it and it would look exactly the same or we could put in something else and alter it in a different way, which is what we're gonna do here. And the look that we're going for is this. So this defines the facing direction of a pixel along the width of the grass. So hopefully this is um, kind of apparent as you look at it, but the, the black here is saying point in a negative Y direction or to the left. And the white is saying point in the positive y direction or to the right. So we see that this black here corresponds to this rim of the grass. The white here is this face, which is pointing to the right uh, and therefore is in shadow. This is pointing to the left and is therefore in the light, just like this rim. And this is in shadow pointing to the right again. So we have a kind of a V-shaped grass with a bit of a, a rim on the edge. So that's what's defining the shape. Um, and we can see that we're just interpolating between positive one and negative one to control the vector. And uh, you know, and that looks like this um, because we can't see the negative one. But if we were to go ahead and look at the absolute value, we would see this, right? Uh, so how do we create this look? Uh, so there's lots of different ways you could potentially do this. The way that I've chosen to do it is with smooth steps using the UV coordinates. So we're essentially taking our texture coordinates, grabbing our green channel, subtracting 5, 0.5 to get a center line that allows us to operate on each half of the blade, essentially. For the mid rib, we're taking a smooth step um, like this. So I'm setting a softness value and uh, subtracting that from zero for the min and using itself for the max. And if we look at um, our end result and also look at the blade of grass, as we adjust this midrib softness value, at zero, you can see we get a very sharp line. And if it's set to zero, the transition between the left and the right edge of the grass is very strong. And if I set it to something higher, we get a very soft gradient from where the grass is pointing to the left and where the grass is pointing to the right. I kind of like setting this to some relatively low value that gives a nice level of sharpness, but also still looks you know, kind of organic and, and natural. Um, for the bottom section, this is controlling the rim. So we're taking the absolute value of our subtraction, our subtracted UV coordinates, which is giving us a gradient where zero is in the middle and we've got 0.5 on each of the left and right edges. And when we smooth step between that, we have these rim positions and softness values we can control. 
So if we look at these, and again, pay attention to the way the grass is changing. When I change the position, you can see that the rim can move towards the center, right? So here is with it kind of a you know kind of center point, which is giving the grass more of a W shape. Uh, then I can also change the softness. So let's see here now it's more of um, you know a soft curved W shape. Um, I kind of like when the rim is relatively sharp and also relatively close to the edge because I like the, the look of that edge lighting and the kind of the sense of thickness that it gives to the blade of grass. Um, and then, you know, that looks like this, right? So we have our zero values on the edge and um, our one value in the center. For our top section, we're taking it in one direction, we're taking it the other direction, and we're interpolating between the two. So this doesn't look like a whole lot, right? We've got a value of one that transitions to zero, back to one, and then back to zero. Um, it's not really obvious what this is doing, but then when we interpolate between one and negative one, we get the desired result. So here is one, again, pointing to the left, or negative y, or zero is pointing to the left and negative y, and then we have one pointing to the right in the positive y, uh, negative y, and positive y. And to understand you know, how and why this works, you really just need to understand normal maps in general and how the value of a particular channel tells the shader how much that pixel is pointing in that direction, right? So we can see that if this is the Y direction, because we're putting it into the Y channel of our normal, which we're normalizing and ultimately putting the normal output of our shader, we're saying this negative value should point to the left, this positive value should point to the right. And then we combine that with our existing normal, and now we get the end result, right? Where here the red is telling us this is the edge of the grass towards the tip, and it's pointing in the positive x direction. This is in the negative x direction. And then we also, of course, have our z direction telling us how uh, the grass is pointed along the blade. And uh, this is our final normal output to get the ultimate um, look that we are going for. And then in addition to all of this, um, I've also, as you can see, added some um, color and specular to the grass. So if I let's see if I can find an angle where this is visible like that, there we go. You can see that um, what I've done here is just grabbed a noise texture and I'm stretching it out um, a lot. So it gives the look of veins along the blade of grass. I'm also using that to interpolate between uh, darker and lighter color, as well as um, different levels of roughness and specularity. So I'm gonna go ahead and just maximize this. So here's this particular, just very, very simple way of giving it a bit of uh, color and, and texture. Um, and then here is the Y normal node group. Just zoom in on that so everybody can see it a little better. And again, you could kind of make any shape of grass you want by understanding how that Y value is altering the facing angle of the blade. So this is just one of the many possible shapes that you could create um, purely using math. And that's all for this one. Let me know if, again, there's anything else you want to see in this series, and uh, hopefully we can keep it going. Uh, but thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.